Welcome, welcome, welcome to this Wise Women Roundtable, exploring the absolutely amazing and continually increasingly intense energies that we are dancing with over time. We've just been doing this, you know, for how long have we been doing this? Like a year and a half now um, that we've been doing these uh, tape roundtables and looking at the energies. And uh, I'm just amazed at how the intensity feel, feels like it's just heating up or getting more so or something like that. <laughs> Uh, so uh, here we are recording this just a few days before a new moon in Cancer on July 17th. Uh, that's going to be out of bounds, another out of bounds. So we had the full moon in June was out of bounds. The new moon in June was out of bounds. The full moon in early July was out of bounds. And now we have this new moon in Cancer out of bounds. Like everything has been outside the boundaries of ordinary reality for the last month and a half or so it's been wild and it can only happen in certain time periods when the moon is coming into its 19 year lunar standstill something we've talked a little bit about before and uh and if you don't know what that is i'll put a link to a video that will explain more about it but it's the time when the moon in certain signs when it's in sagittarius capricorn or uh, gemini cancer goes outside the boundaries of the sun so we go outside of ordinary reality and so we've been in this sort of extraordinary place ex extraordinary outside of ordinary uh for since uh, since that full moon in um, early june and then the other thing that's happening with this new moon, uh, also th this out of bounds new moon that's taking place is that the nodes are moving into Aries for the first time in 18 and a half years. The last time they moved into Aries was um, just the exact date was uh, <laughs> December 26, 2004. And at that time, um, Pluto was in the sign of Sagittarius. That's going to um, explain more about why I said that in a moment. And so now on July 17th, 2003, we have the node North node going into Aries, the South node going into Libra and Pluto. So they, when they move the, the nodes move backwards. So they move into the 29th degree, not the zero degree. So they're moving into the 29th degree of Aries Libra and Pluto is at 29 degrees Capricorn in a pretty precise square. There will be three exact, like to the minute squares on July 22nd, July 24th or 5th, and July 28th. It's kind of just hanging out right there in that really precise moment. And it's going to stay very close through the month of August and within five degrees until middle of December. So this is a, a, a feature that doesn't usually happen you, when uh, the nodes move into Aries Libra, we always know with the North Node is in Aries, we always know we're in the, um, the coming into the 19 year lunar standstill exact center point, which is when the North Node reaches zero Aries. That's the most precise point of that. It's when we know we're at the center point of the lunar standstill. There's about three years on either side of that center point when the moon's going outside the boundaries of the, um, of the sun and the signs of Gemini Cancer, Sagittarius Capricorn. Uh, and literally in Scotland, it, you know, in the, the Callanish uh, Standing Stone Circle, that's where the moon walks the land at when it's in those signs, like the full moon in Capricorn or in Sagittarius will just walk across the land. And that's, that's where the saying comes from. When the moon walks the land at the calling of the cuckoo, the shining ones will return. And again, I have, I know I've shared this before, but I was there in 1997 we were doing a big ceremony in one of the stone circles there. And somebody said, I heard a cuckoo. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, we're the shining ones. So I feel like some of the intensity of what this is, is helping us to remember that we're the shining ones. We are coming back at this time. We're waking up and remembering that. So Pluto is here to help um, transmute and transform, do an alchemical process on everything that's in the way of us being the shining ones, being the ones that are here to shine the light of this new cycle of um, life, like a 26,000 year galactic year. We're here, we're here as the seeds of that, the seed people. We're here as the 
um, the shining ones to help shine the light into how we want to really um, intend this next cycle that we're coming into. So Pluto is here to help us um, look at all the things that are in the way of that and transmute, transform them so that we can show up in the strength and power of who we truly are and not who we just, just who we think we are. <laughs> so, um, and it's rare because Pluto does not, um, can only be in Capricorn every 250 years or so. It's there for about 16 years. So the nodes don't always go into Aries Libra while the while Pluto's there. So this is rare. And the last time it happened, it was the North node that went into Libra, the South node went in, and that was back in 1770. Two, I want to say, I don't not remember the exact date, but it was back in the 1770s. And, uh, and it wasn't um, at the precise moment of the nodes moving in to Libra Aries at that time. It was, it was more in the middle of it had been there for a while. And then this one is just like, it's just so astounding. Like they can both be at those 29th degree the the Aries 29 degrees, Libra South Node 29 degrees, and then Pluto at 29 degrees, Capricorn squaring the whole thing and just lighting it up. So how are we completing with the past so we can move to our future? What's in the way of the things that we've known in the past that will help us move to our future? <laughs> you know, when we when we can transmute, transform those things, um, and because we and also what are the gifts of the past that can help us move to our future? And Pluto can shine a light on that as well. So this is big and it's gonna, these energies will last until mid-December. I mean, the, the intensity of what it is that we're experiencing. So it's not just this moment right now, it's going on into, uh, into the end of the year. And then on July 22nd, when we have the first exact Pluto square, the new nodes to the minute happening, we also have the sun moving into Leo and Venus stationing retrograde. And this will be the completion of the current Venus cycle. She's gonna go into a synthesis point, but the current Venus cycle is Capricorn. And that started in January of 2022. And that is the energy of the grandmothers. Um, how, are, how are we now remembering and coming back to the place of honoring grandmother wisdom that everybody has within them? It, we just often don't remember, or we don't know how to access it. And we also don't have examples of it so much in our culture of how, um, of having grandmothers who are wise and who can be there to help guide and support us. So we're having to bring that back within ourselves to be able to have that experience again. And of course, there are the 13 indigenous grandmothers, circle of grandmothers that have been, that came together, interestingly, in 2004, when the nodes last went into Aries Libra, <laughs> uh, and at the end of 2004, but they but they were brought back together. And the prophecy is that when the voices of the grandmothers are heard, that that peace will come to the earth again, or that will come back into balance. Uh, I don't know if I didn't probably say that exactly right, but something like that. And so this is um, this cycle of the last 18, almost 19 months of really tuning into the depth of grandmother wisdom has been profound. So love that we've been doing this wise women round table pretty much the whole time we've been in this cycle. <laughs> Actually, I think we started a month or two before we went into this cycle. Uh, so, um, so we're accessing our own wisdom to share with you to help support your process as we're moving through this time. Uh, so then a new Venus cycle will start in August. We'll probably do another video before that. So I'm not going to talk about that right now, but just to say that this is, um, Venus is in Leo. She's going retrograde at 28 degrees Leo within two degrees of the star Regulus, the heart star of the lion and, uh, really bringing in the heart energy. So how are we in our sovereignty? How are we loving ourselves? How are we doing that from the pure essence of our heart? energy. So those are some things for us to contemplate as we move through this time. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to wow us with whatever she's got to say. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. Yeah, I've busy been trying to do maths in my head to work out where I was 18 years ago. It kind of comes at a time in my life when um, 
when everything was changing, when I had been through something, I might as well just say what it was. I've been trying to uh, conceive, have a baby with my partner Ian for many, many years. And uh, we finally, through there was a miscarriage and all of those things. And I just kind of come to a biological age, I guess. It wasn't just, it wasn't really the biological age, but it was the time my life was like, this is not serving me anymore to be in this energy. I have to drop it. I have to put it down. And it was around that time. So I did, and my life just got so much better because I just let it be. So I kind of feel as if I'm in those sorts of energies again, in, in is a different script, different story. Um, I actually feel quite excited about the energies. I know they're wild and crazy, and that's not always very comfortable for me, but I can really feel the undercurrent for myself and for people like well, like us, but my the kind of people that I work with are, are healers, often very gentle folk, very, um, who've kind of been the hidden healers, maybe, you know, in, in when what I mean by that is that they haven't fully acknowledged it in themselves because it wasn't safe to, and we've all got those parts in us. So, um, what's been kind of moving through my own system and just watching it and encouraging people to um, to really start to sense that the times are changing and soon, I don't know when soon will be, there will be a beautiful planet of abundance for us to live in. It, it might not be next week or maybe it's already there, you know, well, it is already there, but maybe what, can I speak for myself as a human I might not be to able to fully access it for a while but I think there's some very amazing times coming and the two things that I'd really I guess like to just share that I hope will be helpful to some people listening is that if you are like me um, and, and I'm sure many people here will be very empathic and very sensitive and that's just been such a hugely misunderstood way. The, those of us who are the shining ones, we probably do feel a lot. We probably do. And we've we've lived our lives often through kind of, mer there's a lot of merging been happening, which is a way to help others. It's a way to support others. Of course it is, because when we feel understood, there is always a kind of merging that happens. Because, and that's why we feel understood, because that person has, you know, we've come together enough. But I think the time is coming now when we can really start to understand and uh, discern. Because sometimes when we over merge and we over feel, um, it's not good for us as sovereign beings. So if I, Just as an example, I don't know if this is this is quite me, but you know, if I'm somebody that's like so empathic that I'm on 24 hours a day trying to save the whales across in Australia on a, on a subconscious level, that's very um, my nervous system's not getting a rest. And so there's a time when I think the time is here and coming when we can own our own kind of stitch in the quilt around all of this. So I'm here to do this part. So and so therefore I can relax around all the things that I'm not here to do and that I can't do. I, it's okay for me to take some time off. It's okay for me to focus on myself. It's okay for me to have a life outside of my healer self. Um, and there are many, many beautiful essences can, that can help with that level of sensitivity. And the other one that's kind of like been really coming up for me and people that I work with right now is, is, is sort of linked, but often we've often felt really, really, really different from everybody else. Um, and as we get older, we feel even more different. But then that feeling different was probably there right from when we arrived on this planet and as children, I don't know if you two were like me, you know, used to talk to flowers and the garden and all that kind of thing. And even now I, I speak to many women, usually women, but some men too as well, who are like, 
my goodness, it's just so just being able to say I speak to trees and I speak to flowers, you know, because I can't say that kind of thing. Um, it's just a huge relief to many people when they realize that um, there are people that totally understand them. And I think the time is coming as well when we're going to be able to start to come back to that that spark that we came in with. And then just as an example, if you are here to treat to talk to trees and flowers, which is part of my path, we're going to be able to find, we're going to be able to feel safe and comfortable with that and not have to partition ourselves off and go into over-pleasing or saying yes to things that we mean no to. All of, all of that stuff, I think, very much stems from that. So this is not a great photograph but I'm sure the energy will come through to you. It's just sitting on my desk as a reminder for myself. So this is one of the batch essences, and it's called Centauri, C-E-N-T-A-U-R-Y. And essentially, it's the essence for saying no. So if they're, you know, if you have an overextended energy field naturally, let's let's not try and stop that nature of your energy system because it's part of who you are but let's and I'm saying this for myself and everybody let's intend that that can stay there that it, it can only allow it, it can be we can be connected enough to that energy field that we know that there are certain things that might not be good for us so that there can be a no in the energy field that we're okay with and I actually have an experience with this essence years ago when I worked in the UK as a receptionist for an amazing Chinese doctor. There was um, a lady who was really nice. She used to come in for um, an appointment every week. And she she started coming in a half an hour early every week so that she could have a chat. And it wasn't always comfortable for my energy system to have that happen. And one day I used some of this essence, not really because of her. I mean, obviously I was in that zone. So this wasn't her about her at all. And actually it was a beautiful gift. And as she came through the door, she came towards the desk to kind of sit down and talk to me. And it was almost as if she hit a field. And she went, hmm. Hello, and we, we kind of greeted and she went I think today I'll just go and sit down and read a magazine is that okay and I was like sure and I was like wow so that's how Centauri works it was just so easy that there was some kind of no in my energy system that I, I wasn't accessible so it was really really interesting for me and it was all it showed me again the power of nature and the power of honoring ourselves. And so to just come back to what I feel is the time is coming and we may need to learn how to do this <laughs> and we may need to make some mistakes along the way, but I really, really, really do feel that the time is here for us to start to stand up. We've been talking about sovereignty for many, many years, probably many centuries. And it's like, okay, so I get this now. I get what sovereignty is. I get, I get it. So now I need to find out, you know, I need to learn to walk with it and dance with it and truly, 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 not just play with the words anymore. Do it, be it. And so that was a bit Aries, wasn't it? <laughs> It was a bit Sarah. <laughs> it was a bit something, something. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's what the Nature Kingdom would like to express through me today. So, so Nalini, I hand over to you. Thank you, Sarah. This has been so much fun to listen to each of you ladling light in exactly the way that works for you. And I just, I love you and I appreciate it more than my body's going to let me say right now, <laughs> but um, not, but, and 
it's always fascinating when any of us come together like this. And we did begin this uh, panel or whatever we want to call it at, just before the grandmother energies. But another word for the grandmother energies, as you both mentioned, is that elder wisdom that each being holds, even if they're an infant, even, you know, male, female, none of that matters. We all have it. This is what I find is being honed and refined and cultivated within each of our essences and does that happen through challenging circumstances well it seems to have done um does that happen through ease and grace that also occurs and that's happening all at once right now um i find it fascinating i mean i love the centauri essence i um I don't know how if anyone would suspect this of me at this point, but um, I was one of those very, very empathic, open children who really um, didn't understand about boundaries. And did I not have them most of the time? Did I not understand the need for them all of the time? Because my awareness was very much in the oneness in nature, in well, nature collaborates and cooperates this way. What is wrong with the bipeds? And um, I used to get that look that the dogs get sometimes when they go, you know, all the time. And gradually things were explained to me by various teachers, et cetera. But as we come into our inner elder, our inner teacher, even the teaching word, that archetype, is no longer really appropriate. It's no longer resonates. It's that sovereignty. And I love it that you brought up Centauri because one of the things I've been studying lately are the dwarf planet and Kuiper belt objects, um, several of whom are called centaurs. And they all have, each one of those celestial beings has an energy of a particular slice of no. And it very much has to do with what resonates and what doesn't, what's appropriate for the being and what is not. And we all know that. I mean, I, I know these ladies rather well. And I know that as they were children, they had that no. Now, I did not know them then in the physical, but we can all see that about one another. You knew what resonated with you and what did not. And yet so much of that was subjugated to the right thing, the done thing, what the, et cetera, what's allowed in the front room. And we knew what was inappropriate for us and what wasn't. And typically, especially for women, um, also for men, but especially for women, uh, we were conditioned that that doesn't matter your no doesn't matter your true essence is less important than the done thing and the done thing all over the planet right now is dissolving is evaporating is breaking down is falling apart new things are falling together however we want to see that and it might not look like it in some cases because you know the fist will tighten and then more things slip through the fingers so it's important to remember about the slip string because, stream because the fist is only part of a construct, a reality construct that we've all helped to invent. And there's no blame. There's no, you know, buck to pass. Um, this last moon was the buck moon, by the way. Um, <laughs> there are the full moon was. There's nothing like that except the acceptance and acknowledgement of responsibility at a sovereign level at that level that says this is what's appropriate for this being and this little thread in the quilt that happens to be this body this incarnation and it's only one of many and so all those things that we could climb into you know the archetype we could climb into like one of those big military walking machines the the identity that we could climb into and wear hey some they're fun but is it is that what's real for each of us? And only our source essence, only our sovereignty can answer that question. No one can answer it for us. And also all of those fake personas, the fakeness of us that we've taken on for mostly protection, mostly to hide behind, even if we won't admit that, mostly to be something that we're not to pretend because that's what the world seems to demand and it has tended to do that all of that stuff 
if we just let it collapse, then the light has room to breathe. You know, the love that we are has room to breathe. It doesn't need to grow. It's everything. It's infant. It's there. What it is demanding at the moment is that it express through every single fractal, every single particle of us from the quantum level to the most expanded level. You know, every single fractal. You know, I like to think of fractals as paisley. You know, there are the little curly cues and there are the big ones, but it's the same shape, right? And lots of different colors and it's pretty. <laughs> so all of that is moving through all of us. That's what nature does. That's what the stars do. That's what the planets do. And we get so focused because we've been taught to and because it's easier on the little things, the boxes, that we forget that all of life happens outside the box. And that sovereignty has everything to do with that boxlessness and everything to do with what is showing up as what we call the unknown, but that elder wisdom, that sovereignty within us does know. You know, the stars cascade through Kale and nature wells up through Sarah and they meet, not necessarily in two people, but as these amazing streams of light. And we all have this within us and how lucky and we are, how fortunate that there are beings who are willing to stand up and express that in their own sovereignty. And we each have that. We each have a piece of that, a stitch in the quilt. And it's time for the gloves to be off. You know, the gag order was repealed at the summer, well, summer in the Northern Hemisphere, the June solstice of 2011. And you can all argue about the dates if you want to. Anyway, <laughs> the gag order was repealed then. And I remember it. I remember the download from the Syrians coming through, like the gag order is lifted. And I just rejoiced, even though I had no idea what they were talking about. I, mean, I did, but, you know, who knows what that means. And it was like, the truth can be spoken. It can be fully, absolutely embodied and expressed. And we have spent the last, you know, decade or so as we moved into the cultivating of this wisdom, you know, becoming the oak tree, that we are no longer in acorn status, except that we are, that we're becoming that oak tree that says the oak tree is a host to an entire environment, an entire community. One of the most magical things about it is the, all the mycelium that, that just supports it and also lives within it. It's such a synchronistic symbiosis. I said that right, amazing. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's all of this collaborative working together. We each have a stitch in the quilt and we each are the whole thing. But it's also changing and shifting all of the time. So it's a time to honor that, honor that as it wells up within Gaia, as it wells up within each of us, as our blood changes, as our physiology changes. And is that going to be a little weird for our minds? Well, it is being, isn't it? But also letting that go and just letting the false pretenses go. And especially the ones that we didn't realize we were holding on to and we didn't realize were fake. And we just played along with or rode along with or did whatever with just because. But this is the death of the done thing. Even though societies need what they need to, manners being one of them, to have things work. <laughs> but allowing, what is it that really I'm living within and for? And let that lead. Let the light lead. The love is there. You know, we can all be the love that we are. So again, thank you to both of you and thank you to everyone watching. We are all important. It's time to remember that. Thank you so much. Okay.